in handcuffs, 40-year-old Andre McDonald only had this to say to the cameras. He says he loves his daughter, and this is Andre's wife, 29-year-old Andrine. She has been missing since Friday. Okay, guys, welcome to the talking news. I've got an update, but first, I found this fabulous clip. Uh, I want you to check it out for yourself. Maybe you've seen it, but if you haven't, uh, you're going to like it. If you have seen it, hang in there. executed a couple of search warrants at his house uh, yesterday uh, our moving uh, moving surveillance some of our investigators uh, conducted a moving surveillance of this suspect when he left the house uh, went to a gun shop purchased a gun and some ammunition a lot of ammunition in fact uh, they intercepted him as he was leaving the uh, the gun shop uh, at some point there it looked like he got spooked he left it so much so that he left his gun and his identification behind the gun shop uh, we went back to the residence, developed further information there, which prompted us to run a second search warrant at that house. Once we made entry to the house, uh, we found some, some things that, that really quite disturbing, pretty indicative of what, what I believe that we're going to find. And uh, uh, the, the evidence consisted of a, a shovel, an ax, uh, some heavy duty trash bags, some work gloves, and two five gallon uh, containers of gasoline and a, and a, a burn pit, portable burn pit, burn barrel. Um, it led us to believe that uh, these were implements that were going to be used to dispose of a body, quite obviously to us, uh, which, which really tends to drive home the point to us that, that we believe that, that Andrean McDonald is no longer living. And so uh, in, in conducting the search of the residence, we found a receipt where in fact he had earlier in the day purchased those items that we found uh, there was a, a, quite a bit of effort that went into uh, destroying that receipt to try to prevent us seeing uh, where it was purchased and when it was purchased. So that led us to obtain a warrant for a, a arrest uh, for, <clears throat> for Andre McDonald uh, for the charge of tampering with uh, evidence, which is a felony charge. At this point, we're bringing him here to the, to the magistrate's office to get him booked in. Uh, we believe there's going to be a very high bond on him. If he's able to make that bond, there's going to be a condition of release uh, with GPS and house arrest. So we're hoping that for the time being, he's either going to be here or confined to his residence if in the event that he does make bond, which will allow us to keep investigating. Uh, at this point, today anyway, our uh, investigation has consisted of literally scouring creek beds and drainage ditches and ravines uh, with cadaver dogs looking for Ms. Mc Mrs. McDonald. Every last one of us has been out there in the cold, uh, braving the elements and, and, and conducting this physical search. I and mean, that's, that's why I'm dressed the way I am dressed. I've been out there leading one of the search parties with, with the cadaver dogs. And so we're hopeful that we, that we find her very soon. Um, we're extremely uh, happy that we were able to get this suspect into custody and put him behind bars where he belongs. I'll open it up to questions. I know he's just part of the evidence. 
Right now he's charged with tampering with evidence, uh, again, in, in trying to conceal uh, the purchase of what we believe were going to be implements to, to, to dispose of a body. Has he said anything? To us, he has not said much. Uh, when we originally came into contact with him on Friday evening, uh, he lawyered up pretty quick. He, he asserted his right to, to uh, counsel, which he absolutely has, and, uh, but it, it made us a, a bit suspicious. Not the fact that he asserted his rights, the fact that he didn't seem to care very much at all that his wife was missing, and the fact that he just flat out refused to help us with, with finding her. And I think one of the most heartbreaking aspects of this case is that at the center of this is a little girl, she's six years old, who, uh, quite frankly, frankly speaking, uh, for all intents and purposes, just lost two parents. And uh, this, this little girl is, is autistic, mostly nonverbal. And to us, and I can't go too much into it, but to us, it's pretty evident that she saw something. She saw what happened to her mom. And that's that's the most heartbreaking part of this case. And so um, that is why, personally, I consider it an honor to be traipsing through creek beds in, in 40 degree weather. We owe it to, to the memory of Miss McDonald, if in fact she is deceased, and, and to this little girl uh, to bring some closure to this case. Okay, guys, we want to talk about this, right? We want to know what every little detail that they know, but unfortunately, we're not going to know this, so we have to dig for it. Sometimes we find something that is truthful. Sometimes we do not. And um, so it's very, very hard to get um, solid details in this story at the moment. But what we do know is quite interesting already. Many of the people and comments that I'm reading, they are devastated and surprised that this guy, just like Chris Watts, was capable of murdering such a beautiful woman. Uh, but one thing we did see, he eagerly leaned towards the microphone as he's walking toward the door to say, I love my daughter. So you're being accused of murder. You know this. You've got microphones reaching towards you. Media is reaching out to you. And he's not really concerned at all. And the only thing he has to say to media is not, I did not do this. She must be missing. We need to find her. He only has one thing to say. And in my opinion how he acted during this time pretty much put the you know noose on it because he did kill his wife but of course in a court of law you are innocent until proven guilty that being said my personal opinion of what I see is that he is guilty he says I love my daughter that's what he says to the media he doesn't try to defend himself and it's almost as if he says you know what I'm not going to say anything else I'm letting you know I did it without saying I did it now I've hired a lawyer let's see if they can take me down so he's smart enough to keep his mouth shut so now that we realize he is smarter than we thought he was, you know, what happened? Why is he in handcuffs? Well, my idea is this, that it, like the um, Chris Watts story, he didn't have time to finish the job. And if he had of, he would have gotten away with it, hands down. In fact... There is still a chance he could get away with it. There's, you know, there's evidence. Well, the evidence that they're presenting to us is not super great. I mean, it's good, but it's not enough to say for sure that he will get a lifetime in jail or the death penalty, which I'm not familiar. I think, oh, it's Texas that he can get the death penalty and they use it. Now, the investigators are saying and making it very clear and. We are out to seek justice for this little girl, and they plan on doing so. And what I'm hearing, they've had over uh, 340 volunteers actually helping um, the police out. I think that includes the police. 
So it was around 500 of them that were actually searching. 340 were actually uh, volunteer civilians. 70 were from an Air Force, uh, I think it's the 502nd Division Force uh, group that, that volunteered to help search for uh, Andrine's body. And this group was actually focused on a joint base in San Antonio Camp Bullis. And it's based on the information developed within the past couple of days about where Andre McDonald may have gone shortly after his wife disappeared. And this clip says we have information that the suspect very early in the investigation or even before the investigation begun that he was in the area or on the base and he had no official business here. That's why we're concentrating on this area. So they, you know, they're, they've got some tips of where to look. It's a matter of finding her now. And the reason why they're doing this is because, you know, she was, re what she was last seen February 28th alive. And the next day at 1 p.m., people discovered some very horrific evidence at her home, including blood on a light switch. And so police are thinking that she is no longer alive, but we're crossing our fingers she is. Now, like always, I want to mention some of the volunteers that actually help and get out there um, helping their communities. One of those volunteers is actually Andrine's aunt. So it's Cheryl Spencer. And it says that she's a professor from the city of University uh, of New York who flew in overnight to help search for her niece. Spencer thanked everyone from authorities investigating her niece's disappearance to the military and just the civilians who did it out of the kindness of their hearts. And I want to say kudos to you guys. Amazing job. All right, so what was this base used for? So Camp Bullis was actually used as a way um, to train, you know, the Air Force and Marines and combat units. It's also utilized as a field training site for various medical units. I wonder, you know, do you think that he'd take her there for treatment? Is that a possibility? Well, you would think they would know that by now. And... Um, since the military is involved in searching, I don't think that's likely, but I wish it was. So I guess we'll find out more information on this as time moves on. There are some things going on behind uh, where there, there's more information to do with her mother, but I'm not sure what it is. But it kills me to see her in so much pain. Any mother having to go through this is tragic. And this story is beginning to hit national headlines. It's starting to, you know, this is one of the topics that are in the news that a lot of people are addressing among so much other news like R. Kelly, uh, the guy that faked that attack, uh, saying Trump supporters attacked him. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on right now, so it's, it's easy to get mixed up in the mess. Now, I've had a few comments where people are wanting me to give them exact details or evidence, which none of us have at this moment. We only have what they're sharing with us. And what we do have that we've gotten from mem family members or whatever, we're not allowed to share it. So you share what you can. But, uh, you know, the garage was one of the big details. A lot of people were kind of saying there's kind of, a conspiracy theory with how, you know, the garage, uh, w whether it was off its tracks or if someone just knocked it off the tracks and it was like that already. Now, one of the key things that I do want to talk about is the daughter. I want to emphasize that police do believe she is a key witness to what happened, that she's seen what really happened and that is what has led them to believe that she is no longer here but i think uh police also think maybe you know even though she was attacked maybe there's a chance 
that she might have survived in some way. And that's why it's so crucial to try to find out where she is. They're trying to locate her, hopefully find her alive. I want to take this opportunity to say I am very sorry to the family. Our prayers are with you. We are here with you, hoping that maybe there's some sort of miracle that Andrine will be found alive and found very shortly. So, anyways, I'm going to end this video here. This is an update, um, and I have a couple of videos coming up that are going to be very detailed. They're probably going to be a little bit lengthy, and so hopefully you'll like those. If you like this video, please subscribe and like. Uh, hit the bell if you, you know, want notices. And I want to say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.